Hello everyone and welcome to the Christmas Everton Show and for this special festive episode I'm delighted to be joined by Duncan Ferguson. Great times to have you on the Everton Show, Duncan, not just because it's Christmas but because there's a great deal of positivity about Everton at the moment. Yeah, it's been brilliant, hasn't it? The results have went very well for us so we're on a good, good feel you factor. Can, you can tell around that the, the training ground there's a, there's a buzz back, isn't there? Yeah, I think you get the confidence back and you get the results, you know what I mean? You get the results, you get the confidence and everybody starts to feel a bit better about themselves and you know the performances have been coming. How have you enjoyed working with Big Sam, Little Sam and Craig Shakespeare? Yeah, the boss has been brilliant to me, to be honest Yeah, He's uh, given a lot of responsibilities and I've really enjoyed it. And of course you've got um, Sammy Lee there as well, who's got a tremendous experience. And Craig, who, you know, they've been managers themselves. Mm. So it's a lot of experience there and it's uh, good to be learning off these guys. It's great for yourself and the other coaches at the football club that we've got a backroom staff like those three who have all managed in the Premier League. As you say, you, you can only learn off them, can't you? But that's it, you're learning every day. And you know, I'm trying to hang on to every word that the, these lads are saying for, the, for my own education, you know. Are you still learning every day, Duncan? Every day. Everybody's learning every day, aren't they? That's the, that's the job. That's probably every job. That you learn every day. You learn the good points, you learn, you learn the bad points. But no, I'm, uh, I've been learning every day. And of course, when a new manager comes in, he gives you new ideas again. How pleased has everybody been with the the clean sheets that we've been keeping lately? Yeah, I think well, the manager obviously stresses that. He, he wants to be hard to beat. I'm sure every manager wants to be hard to beat. But of course, um, saying it and doing it is two different things. I think the manager coming in and he's really got us organised in the, the defensive side there. And I think that's shown on the pitch so far. Do you enjoy watching Big Sam's sessions? Oh, uh, yeah, I love the bossy sessions. I mean, I enjoy all my manager's sessions, to be honest. Yeah. And as I said, I enjoy um, learning, enjoying watching. Uh, I've had a lot of experience myself in the game now. So, yeah, you're, all, you're always learning something new. Let's speak about Wayne Rooney, who's been in tremendous form recently. And you won't be surprised at all at that, will you? Class is permanent, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know why it was in doubt, really, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, um, he's a... He's a great player, he's been a world-class player, he's, he's still a very, very, very good player and um, he's probably been our best player this, se this mm. season, I would say. And uh, you know, for me, it was, uh, it was an easy decision to bring him to the club and I'm glad, I'm glad we did. There's some terrific footage of you celebrating his goal from his own half against West Ham United at Goodison Park. There aren't many players that could have scored that, are there? No, nah, I mean, Wayne's a class act, isn't he? He's, he's, he's proved it all through his career. He's continuing to prove it and he'll continue to prove it next coming years. He's, he's been a great signing for Everton. I mean, you know, how would you not want him back at Everton mm. Football Club? I mean, a scouser, a big Evertonian, he loves the club and he's producing the goods, which I'm sure we all knew he would do that. Has he changed much as a person, Duncan? Because obviously you were close to him when he was here as a player the first time round and now he's back. He seems the same sort of guy to us from the outside looking in, but he's achieved so much in the game, so it would be understandable if he wasn't the same guy. Yeah, no, he's the same same fella as I see. Very, very quiet lad, very humble. You know, he's a class act, you know what I mean? And he's a class player. So, no, he's, uh, everything was good about Everton is, uh, you know, is in, instilled in Wayne Rooney, everything. Mm. We've got a lot of young players in and around the squad at the moment, so people like Wayne and the senior boys have had to take a bit more responsibility, the likes of Ashley Williams, and, and, and they've responded, haven't they? You must be pleased with that. Yeah, I mean, obviously the senior players have got a big part to play in every club. Um, and Ashley's stepped, stepped forward, he's, uh, he's been defending really well. And he's been looking after Mason next to him. So mm. it's been a good big partnership in the last, the last month or so. So yeah, we're really happy with the senior players and of course they've got a massive part to play. Do you think that's helped Ashley having somebody alongside you like Mason to look after, keep him on his toes a little bit? Well, I think Ashley's a, he's been a top player, hasn't he, for a number of years. But yeah, I think, uh, I think Ashley and Mason are quite close off the pitch. Mm. I think that obviously helps. And yeah, he's, he's, a, he's the, the older player and I'm sure he's, uh, he's helping Mason out a lot. You and I have done plenty of interviews over the years, and you always over the years, and you always say that you love the scouts mentality, you love the scouts attitude. You must be thrilled to bits with the way John Joe Kenny's developing. Yeah, John Joe's done brilliant since he's come into the team. Um, he's done really well. Um, you know, he's uh, he's he's really established himself at the right back now. Obviously, we've got Seamus Coleman to come back, but John Joe's did uh, did brilliant, and he's he's a scouser. He's an Evertonian. He's for the mm. local area. I mean, that's what we want in this club, don't we? You worked with John Joe at the academy, you worked with the likes of Tom Davis, Benny Beningamy as well. Has that been a help to those young players to come in and look around the dressing room? And it must be big for a young player to come into a Premier League dressing room, but to see somebody that they've worked with before, like yourself, a familiar face who knows all about them. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it does help them, but I mean, you know, um, coming into the first team is a massive step and you know, you can sink or you can swim. Mm. And they're, they're lads at the moment, you know, they're, they're, doing, they're doing well. They've got the potential to continue to be an Everton player, but it's just a start for them. 
I mean, the step up from uh, youth football to the first team is massive. And, um, you know, it's going to take them time to establish themselves as Premier League players. And uh, But with, with a lot of hard work and dedication, which they've been shown, they've, they've got a chance to continue their, their, their career at Everton. Um, but they've done very well so far. Of course, there's big expectations at this football club, mm. and we expect to be fighting towards the top of the league. And it's a big ask for a lot of these players, but at the moment, they're they're certainly stepping up to the mark. Is it mentally tough for a young boy to come into a team as well as physically tough? I think every every lad's different, isn't there? I mean, obviously, you know, when you're young, you maybe know has the same pressure on you as an older player's got. But uh, no, you know, they they they, they worked hard um, and they've, they've dealt with it well. What I've saw. You still keep an eye on all the young kids at all the age groups coming through, don't you? Do the academy. You've still seen you out there here at USM Finch Farm watching all the different age groups. Yeah, you, you've got to keep your eye on, haven't you? Because when you're asked your opinion, you've got to give it. So I try to make sure that I keep an eye on all the players um, through all the age groups. And uh, if my opinion is asked, I give it. So obviously, by watching as many football games as I can and watching as many kids as I can, it gives you a good, uh, a good um, perspective on who's coming through. As a coach now, do you, do you find yourself watching matches on the television as a coach or still as a football fan? If Manchester City are playing Manchester United, for example, are you looking at it as a coach and an analysing it? Yeah, I mean, you look at it as a coach now. I mean, it's a long time since I played, so, Matt, you know, so, um, no, you look at it as a coach and you look at um, potential signings and you're looking at um, formations, you're looking at tactics, you know what I mean? So, it's always from a coaching point of view. You're still very much involved and you've still got that passion on the sidelines, we can all see that, but. Three o'clock when Zed Cars is playing, is that when you really miss actual playing? Yeah, I mean, you miss playing, you know what I mean? But, um, you know, I reckon every player misses playing, but you've obviously it comes to an end, doesn't it? My, my, my focus now is on my coaching, and, uh, you know, it's just been focused for that game as a coach, really. I, I look at football now as, as through coaching eyes. Is the Duncan Ferguson style centre forward a dying breed? There don't seem to be many big barnstorming centre forwards like yourself in the game at the moment? There's just trends, aren't there? Different trends. I think a few years ago it was all smaller players like Barcelona had and they were really the team they, everybody was trying to chase and um, they didn't have any big players. So uh, I think um, that's kind of starting to come back to the big target man. I think uh, there's, you know, it's just a trend, isn't it? But yeah, there's no many good big strikers out there, but if, mm. if there, there is one, I'm sure every team would like to have one. There's always room for a big barnstorming centre forward in football, that's for sure. Right, we're going to show you a lovely piece of film now. It's one of our Blue Crimbo edits. Helen Fosborough visited Alder Hay recently with three of our young players. We're here at Alder Hay Hospital waiting for some of the first team players to arrive to meet some very special children. They're undergoing treatment here for cancer. And today we're going to try and bring Christmas to them just that little bit early. What, what was it like when you were here? I mean, can you tell the the lads a bit about you know, what you went through and what you were... Some days are better than others, you know, sometimes you're, you're a bit depressed, you know, and then obviously other days, you know, you feel better in yourself, but, you know, you get through it, you get out your family and whatever. Now how much has this place meant to you then? Quite a lot because, you know, they've saved me life really, haven't they? It's like, you know, if it wasn't for the nurses here, for what they do for people like me, Today, so. Yeah, I think it's been great. I think it's, um, for the lads to come down and see the kids, and you know, just to put a smile on the face. I think um, you know, half an hour, an hour out of your day to come and break up a long day for them and a long week. I think it's brilliant to come and see them. Is it quite humbling seeing kids like this when you realise what a struggle some people are going through? You know, you you, you don't understand how lucky you are. I think uh, you know the kids here. Are, are brilliant. I think um, the staff are brilliant. You know, helping the kids get well. So you know, I think it's great. It's hard to understand what these youngsters are going through and have been through. All they want for Christmas is their health. But seeing the joy and the smiles on their faces when the players arrived and listening to their stories really has been very moving. Hopefully the lads have managed to deliver some festive cheer. Lovely piece of film that, Duncan. And I know when you were a player here, you really enjoyed going to the hospitals at this time of year. Yeah, it's a, a great time, you know, um, it's great to go into the hospitals and see the families and um, you know, the young kids and that obviously they're going through a tremendous um, hardship mm. um, and it's, uh, it's sad, sad to see that but um, obviously when you go in there and you spend a wee bit of time with them 
it, it brightens up their day, you know, so it's something that's um, it's really rewarding and something I really look forward to and enjoy that. It's good for the staff as well, I always think, that the, the porters, the, the doctors, the nurses, everybody that works at these places, they enjoy seeing the players as well, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're all heroes, aren't they? I mean, they're, they do an unbelievable job, you know what I mean? Fantastic people, they're real, real, real heroes, and uh, it's great to, you know, just to be a wee bit a part of that on that day. We do the community side really well, don't we, in Everton? Yeah, we do brilliant, yeah. Do fantastic, doing a great job. That's just about it from Duncan and myself for part one, but don't go too far away because coming up in part two, we'll hear from Andy Johnson, we'll hear from Aaron Lennon, and of course, we look ahead to the weekend Premier League visit of Chelsea. Welcome back to part two. Time to hear now from another former Everton centre forward. Andy Johnson was back at Goodison last week for the Swansea City game, and he took time out to speak to me for the Everton show. You enjoyed yourself at Everton, didn't you? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, you know, it's an amazing club. I didn't realise how big it was until I left, really. Uh, you, you know, it's an amazing club. It's top class. Uh, the fans are great. I had a great set of lads around me, great like management staff. And yeah, I scored, you know, scored like some goals here and had some really good memories. And you got off to a flying start, of course. Always nice for a striker to score a goal on his Premier League debut for a new team, isn't it? Yeah, it took a bit of a deflection, but I'll take it. So, uh, yeah, it's just one of them ones where like you need to get up and running, and uh, it was nice to get up and running on like on a uh, you know like your debut. And then it continued into the season. You know, obviously played Tottenham away, and then obviously the uh, big light game here, which was like the derby at home. So, yeah, it was a good season for me. Do you wish you had a pound for every time an Evertonian stopped you and asked you about <laughs> that three 0 win? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be a uh, I'd be a rich man. <laughs> Do you miss playing? Everybody does, uh, don't they? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, out, out there now that you know, like just watching it from up in the stands, like you wish it was out there. You know, trying to affect the game. You know, it's a fantastic atmosphere. I love like the night games as well. You know, they're great. Uh, you know, a bit like dew on the grass. Uh, yeah, definitely like the banter as well. The boys, I think that's the hardest thing to adapt when obviously you finish uh, coming out of that dressing room with thirty lads for twenty years is tough. But uh, yeah, I'm I miss it. What about the current Everton centre forward, Dominic Calvert Lewin? You like the look of him, don't you? Yeah, I really like him. I think he's fantastic. Uh, you know, for such a young lad to take on that responsibility, with obviously the team being in such a difficult position, you know, I think he's done fantastic. You know, he gets up, he's you know, he's horrible, he's nasty, he wins the ball. Uh, just wish there was a couple more like running beyond him to obviously have him out once, once like then balls are flicked on. But you know, he, you know, he's obviously living in the uh, shadow of Lukaku. Uh, but you know, he's f for for his age and the way he affects the game, uh, you know, I think he's fantastic. It's a lonely role, isn't it, the lone striker? It's tough. It's tough, yeah. Unless you've got a little little <laughs> Australian lad called Timmy Cahill flying in behind you. Yeah, it's tough. You know, it's really tough. But, uh, you know, he's taking it well. He's doing well. Uh, you know, he's causing all kinds of problems. He's quick. He's strong. Uh, you know, he's hungry, which is what I like. Dominic Calvert-Lewin, for a young boy, has done really, really well, hasn't he? Yeah, he's done well. He's done well. He's, uh, he's, he's you know, he's, he's got himself a position there and he's, um, he's been working hard. He's done well. We always want more for him. And uh, yeah, he's got to lead the line, and he's, he's he's quite young, so it's a tough position that to be on on your own up front. But he's done he's done reasonably well. The lone striker is a tough position in the Premier League for for an experienced striker, isn't it? Let alone a youngster who's let's get it right, is still learning his trade. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, the Premier League's tough, and to be on your own up front, it's not easy. Um, you know, playing that being that target man. I mean, he can run in behind as well. There's a, there's a lot to his game that he needs to improve on. But of course, we're doing that um, on the training field as best we can. And uh, no, he's doing, he's doing fine. Do you do a lot of work with the young strikers yourself, Dunk? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, the work I do is when the manager instructs me to do it. So, yeah, so we do work with them. If it's the strikers, if it's the midfielders, if it's the defence, it all depends what we're working on. And I'll, I'll get asked to, uh, whatever the manager asks me to do, I'll do. We're talking about the Premier League being a tough playground. The top division in Scotland in your day was a tough playground for a teenage centre forward at Dundee United. Was it, was it tough for you in the early days? Okay, yeah, it was very tough there. Yeah, it was a, that's a different world, isn't it? Really, when you look mm. back, uh, how we come through, you know, the our, our upbringing was completely different for the, the kids now. It was a, it was a tough environment, and one I wouldn't have changed for the world. You must have learnt an awful lot coming up against some really experienced, battle-hardened Scottish centre halves. Definitely, you know, you got a few knocks and a few bruises <laughs> to prove it. Um, but no, it's uh, the game's changed, isn't it? And um, back then, it was much tougher. It was, it was, you know, it was a great education, as I said. But I mean, the game's obviously now it's a wee bit more, uh, it's quicker. It's maybe a, a, the lads are a little fitter now. But um, no, back in the old day, it was, uh, no, you had to be tough to survive up there. We're talking here at USM Finch Farm. The facilities are fantastic. The young players want for nothing. Probably wasn't like this at Dundee United, was it? Did you have to do all the usual apprentice jobs? Yeah, well, I've got, yeah, everybody did, didn't they, back then? God, you know, you did all the jobs, everything. 
clean the toilets, mopping the floors, <laughs> doing the kit, washing the kit, cleaning the boots, cleaning the manager's car. <laughs> cleaning the manager's car? Yeah, we used to wash his car <laughs> until some, some bright spot decided to take his car to the car wash. <laughs> so we got a, we, we scraped a pound together and uh, took took the manager's car to the car wash. <laughs> About six of us hanging out this big white Audi, and uh, so we used to start doing things like that. But it was great, great, great. And the, the best job was um, sweeping the terraces. Yeah, that was the best job because you you always got a few quid out of it <laughs> because obviously the lads are on the terraces and they're, they're throwing out their, their money at their pockets and that. And they're dropping the money, you know. So when you got you got up to the terraces, you got always got a few quid. It's a great upbringing, that though, isn't it? You must teach it a little bit of discipline and 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 give you more desire to leave that behind and, and get involved with the first team. It's just the way it was, wasn't it? Just the way it was. We never had a lot. Uh, you know, there wasn't any big wages back then. I think my wage was uh, 38 quid or something I was getting. And I got a wee bit of dig money when the manager decided to give me the dig money. Um, so no, it was just the, the way it, it, it was. It's interesting when you, you say you wouldn't have changed it for the world. It, it, it shapes you to become what you are. Absolutely. I think everything does. You know I mean? As you get, as you get older, you get wiser, don't you? And you, you, you draw on these past experiences. And certainly in my education, we're, we're under the guys like Jim McLean, Walter Smith, you know, proper old school, proper mm -hmm. uh, managers, guys that are respected. It was, a, it was a fantastic upbringing for me. That's some tough managers, haven't you, really? Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're quite a few tough ones. <laughs> yeah. no, they've, been, they've all been good, to be fair. Mm. And uh, you're learning for every one of them, aren't you? And you're trying to remember the things they say to you when you know, you're coming through and you try to pass that information on to the kids now. It's an interesting story, it really is, but we're going to take some time now to look ahead to the Premier League game against Chelsea at Goodison Park at the weekend. One player who's been delighted to be back in the first-team frame is Aaron Lennon, and as he tells us now, he's also pleased with his own form. We picked up some great wins, um, a great draw against Liverpool as well, and um, confidence is coming back, and you can, I think you can see that in the performances, um, but definitely we're getting better and better each week now. And do you feel that's the case personally as well? Yeah, I think I'm, I, my fitness is up, getting up there now. I feel sharper, I feel stronger in the games. And um, yeah, like I said, personally, I feel a lot better in the games. Is the manager here having a good influence on you personally as well? Yeah, he's been great. Um, and some of all the staff that have come in have been great with me. Um, they're showing me clips on um, how to improve and the spaces to get in and where to run and stuff. So um, now they've really helped me since, since they've got in. And um, not just the gaffer, um, they've all been great for me, the other staff as well. The next game is Chelsea, and what a great challenge to come off the back of this game now. Yeah, of course. Um, we all know Chelsea are a great side, but we're in a good um, win of form, and at Goodison, we fancy our chances against anyone, so um, we'll look forward to that. We'll get ready in the training pitch this week, and we'll get ready for Saturday. Are you starting to get that mindset here at Goodison Park now, where it almost doesn't matter who the opposition are, you feel like you can win the match? Yeah, I think we've always had that here. Um, like I say, we know at home, the fans get behind us, and and we're a match for any team if we're at it. So, like I said, we know that no team really wants to come to Goodison. And if we're at it, we know we can get a good result. These big games at Goodison, the big, big games against the likes of the Chelsea's and what have you, do you, do you still get pre-match nerves? In fact, you get different pre-match nerves as a coach than you did as a player? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Probably more nervous, to be honest, yeah. Really? Because you're out of control really a wee bit, aren't you? It's down to the players then when they cross that white line to carry your instructions and they've obviously got to, got to perform. Um, as a player, you were just in that mode, and you were, you know, you, you got nervous, but not. I wouldn't say I was too nervous player. You know what I mean? But as a coach, you get very uptight in the touch lines. Even though you've done all that preparation, you've passed on the information as best you can. Once the whistle blows, and you can't influence the game, that's when it's frustrating for you, is it? It, is, it can be, but you can influence it, but not as much as obviously you did when you played. But certainly, certainly, uh, I, f I find it more nerve wracking anyway. Momentum is such an important part of football, isn't it? Particularly at this busy time, if we can keep the momentum going and pick up a few points, you're right up there, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, considering where we've come from in the last, you know, last few weeks, I mean, at the end of the day, we're fighting relegation a month ago. So now we're in the top half of the table. Um, it's been a, a tremendous step we've made. We've just got to continue that, and as you said, we've got to continue that momentum and that confidence. We've got to, we've got to keep that going, and that obviously just comes with the results. Mm. It's going to be a massive game for us on uh, Saturday. Uh, so well, fingers crossed. Need we the fans, do don't we? Need the we fans. Need the fans. Well, the fans are always always important to us, aren't they? Especially at home. No, we need to need to get behind us, and I'm sure they always do it anyway. And we've just got to try and make sure that we perform on the pitch. That's the main thing, isn't it? And picking up their wins. Just to finish off, then, don't just like to revert back to the academy. There's a lot of young players who have come through the academy and made it to the first team. And you, as a coach, have taken the same path as well, haven't you? 
I have done. I mean, I've learned a tremendous amount for the, the academy, for the, that, that pathway that I took. I mean, the academy uh, coaches I learned off, like the Sean Londons and the, the Paul Tates. And at the moment, I've got um, Joe Waldrum and Martin Molden doing a fantastic job there. And of course, they're, they're the, the, the lifeline of the club. They're, mm. they're the, they're the, we need these players coming through. And uh, they've done a, a, a tremendous job uh, uh, doing that. And really are the unsung heroes of uh, uh, that development of these players. I mean, there's no young player nailed on who's ever going to play in the first team. I mean, there's very few, very few young players you could say at 12 year old or 13 year old or 14, 15 are going to play in Everton first team. There's very few of them, so it needs hard work and dedication uh, for other players and the staff. And I mean, in the, there really is a lot of unsung heroes in our academy who deserve mm -hmm. a pat on the back and recognition for the hard work that they're doing for our club. You still love this football club, don't you? Absolutely, you know that will, that will never change. It's, uh, it's our club, isn't it? It's uh, you know the best club in the world, and I'm in, I'm in the best job in the world, and I've got a ringside seat. Can't beat that. And that's just about it for this Christmas edition of the Everton Show. Thanks enormously to Duncan Ferguson for joining us. Thank you for watching as well, and please make sure you watch next week as well because we've got an exclusive interview with Mike Walker, and that's not one to be missed. A very merry Christmas from everybody at the Everton Show. You've been watching The Everton Show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe, and that way you can catch every single future episode.